A uniform beam, AB is attached to a hinge to a wall at NA as shown. Okay, so nice beam. The beam has a length 0 0.5 and weight W. 12 Newton rests on the beam. And it's horizontal and in equilibrium. Oh, this tells us some important stuff here. Equilibrium means the net force is zero. Means all this downward force cancel up with the upwards force. And the force to the right eh, should cancel with another force to the left. Where is that force? Okay, well, we'll, add, we'll add them in a little bit. It also means that the total moment is zero. Means whatever force is trying to make the, 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 the rod rotate clockwise should be cancelled out with whatever force trying to make it rotate anti-clockwise. It's a bit. Okay. And yeah, that, that's just what it means. La. Net moment zero. Okay. State two conditions for object to be equilibrium. Oh man, we just said that. That was the answer. Okay. Let's write it out. So in English, here's how we explain it. Resultant force in all directions actually or any direction usually we say horizontal and vertical but you can expand that to to be more directions uh, all these force add up together is zero resultant here can also mean the sum or addition of all the forces okay and the second definition just now we say is the moment right the rotational aspect so the resultant moment or another word we use is torque about any pivot point any is also zero so this one you gotta memorize the what it means to be in equilibrium and there'll be two points Okay, two, show that the vertical component of the string is 30 Newton. So just now, we go back to the diagram up there. The string can have two components, it's at the angle. So one part is the horizontal, one part is the vertical. You can draw the triangle this way, or you can draw it over this side, it's the same. Alright, so I'm going to use the lower triangle, the one down here. And we redraw it right here. So, zoop. Yes, I was 17 Newton. Horizontal, vertical. And this is 50 degrees. And you want to find vertical component, TY. Or uh, TV. La. V for vertical, right? Okay, TV. So, this is opposite hypotenuse so, sine. Sine of 50 will be TV, 17, okay, and you press calculator, you should get a vertical component of 13.02. If you're not sure how to do this, it's okay, it's a show question. Means you can take the answer and continue on the calculation, subsequent calculation. Okay, so now we're going to do moments. By taking moments about NA, calculate the weight of the beam. Here's the clue. We need to use moments. And usually for equilibrium, yeah, balance, all the moments should cancel out. Which means... Do I have a diagram here? Oh, I do have a diagram here. Okay, let's go and see. Who is causing clockwise moment? There's two forces. These will try to rotate the beam this way. Anti-clockwise moment, there's so far only one, which is the tension, is trying to rotate the beam the other way. Okay, now let's do it this way. And they should cancel out, because the beam is not rotating. Our pivot point is at A, right here. So imagine it's moving like, like that. Okay, a balance. So how do you find moment? You're going to take moment is force times the distance to pivot. So the first one we're going to find is for W, this distance is, what is the distance? The whole beam is 0 0.5, so exactly halfway would be 0 0.25 times W. And then the other force, 12 Newton, times 0 0.35. 
Okay, let's write that down. So clockwise moments equals to the anti-clockwise moments. Okay, let's go. So the weight W times 0 0.25. And one more. 12 Newton times 0 0.35. Equals to anti-clockwise. Okay, let's go see who's anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, there is a vertical component, TV. Oh, it was 13 Newton. Okay, 13 Newton. Or you can draw it since the point is acting on this spot here. 13 Newton right here, pointing up. 13 times the whole length of the rod. So 0 0.5. Alright, go all the way down. So the force times distance, 0 0.5. Okay, so stay calm, look at the forces. Okay, press calculator, you should get a weight of about 9.2. So you can just write that down, 9.2. Uh, the mark says one comes from final answer and one comes from any of these force times distance. It's a C1 mark. So you need to know that moment is force times distance. Okay, next. Calculate the magnitude of the vertical component of the force exerted on the beam by the hinge. On the beam? Okay, okay, let's break that down. On the beam by who? The hinge. Where's the hinge? Hinge is right here. So you know just now how we said there's horizontal and vertical forces? If you look at the string on the right, there is a horizontal component, of course, and a vertical component. Who's cancelling out the horizontal component? It has to be one on the hinge, trying to pull the block in this direction. Then only this force can cancel out this force, and you're in equilibrium. Okay, let's draw the same magnitude. As for vertical forces, I don't know. Maybe it's pointing upwards, maybe it's pointing downwards, but... It looks like we're going to need some help upwards because weight is 9.2. So 9.2 and 12 is all down. Our vertical force is 13. Up. Cannot fight. We need more help pointing upwards. There definitely is going to be another vertical uh, force there. So let's call this a H. Hinge. Okay, okay. Force at the hinge. Okay, no, let's call this hinge Y. Ah, let's call it H Y. Hinge force Y because pointing up. And the other one is hinge pointing in the X direction. Okay, let's add up net force zero. So net force zero means all the force upwards equals to all the force downwards. So upwards. We have hinge force. It's my hinge force. HY. We have string tension, 13. We have downwards weight, 9.2 and 12. Add up all the forces together. You should get a hinge. Okay, like if we keep the 9.2, should be about 8.2. Now here they allow you to keep your... 8.2, or you can keep it as 8. Oh, so can. The main idea is to understand what it means to have zero net force. Equilibrium, remember? Earlier we said equilibrium. Alright. Now we're going to move some blocks. Let's put the picture. Okay, let's put the picture up here so we can see it. Okay. The block is now moved closer to the end of the beam. Where's our block? There it is. So this one is going to move this way. Assume the beam remains horizontal. Okay, it's not going to rotate, not going to fly. It should still be in equilibrium. State whether this will increase, decrease, or have no effect on the horizontal component of force exerted on the beam by the hinge on the beam by the hinge. Oh, that was this force we draw just now. Okay. 
horizontal force. Um, what does what affects this? Ah, uh? you see this h x or any forces acting on the pivot point doesn't affect the moment. So we need to look at the net force. What cancels out h x will be the tension force here. T x, and then there's a T y right pointing upwards. Why would T x change? Will it change? How do we know? I think we need to think about the tension. Will the overall 17 Newton change or not? This is the clue. So, I'm going to work backwards a little bit. Let's go back to this. What happens when you bring this closer to the left? I mean, the force 12 Newton is fixed. La. It's the weight. It's not going to change. It's constant. W is not going to change. It's constant. Put a box around it to show that it's constant. But the moment though, the moment may decrease. So as you move this closer, your clockwise moment decrease. Because your distance is smaller. And moment is force times distance. So distance decrease, moment decrease. Okay, so let's keep track of our train of thought. Number one, clockwise moment decrease. Number two, to maintain equilibrium, the anti-clockwise moment also have to change already. So anti-clockwise moment also decrease. Now who is providing anti-clockwise moment? There's only one force doing that, which is our Ty right here. So number three, in order for anti-clockwise moment to decrease, tension have to decrease. And we didn't change the angle of the string, right? The rope is not tilted, anything. So when tension decreases, so the components probably will have to decrease as well. So less Tx and Ty. Less Tx. Ah, finally. So Tx is balanced out with Hx. They are both pointing in the horizontal. They are the only horizontal forces. So when Tx is less, Hx also become less. Horizontal force also decrease. Wow, that's a very long train of thought. Okay, if you can explain this whole uh, thought process, this causes this, causes this, causes this, causes this, then there will be a very good training for you. How to explain. It's only one mark, still okay. If they say state and explain three marks, wow, I cannot already. Okay, but that's all for this moment question. Do go and relook at some of the parts where you're not very sure. And really think carefully, it has to make sense in your head. The diagrams and how to see the arrows. Okay, but that's all for this question.